Rend your hearts and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for God is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and repents of evil. Jesus said, If anyone will come after me, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth his praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation, and so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him. Let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. The Invitatory and Psalter Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Come, let us adore him. Psalm 107, verses 1 through 3, 17 through 22. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. Let all those whom the Lord has redeemed proclaim that he redeemed them from the hand of the foe. He gathered them out of the lands from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some were fools and took to rebellious ways. They were afflicted because of their sins. They had abhorred all manner of food and drew near to death's door. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He sent forth his word and healed them and saved them from the grave. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his mercy and the wonders he does for his children. Let them offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving and tell of his acts with shouts of joy. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Numbers. From Mount Hor, the Israelites set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom, but the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it upon a pole. And whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. Here ends the lesson. A song of penitence. O Lord and ruler of the hosts of heaven, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all their righteous offspring, you made the heavens and the earth with all their vast array. All things quake with fear at your presence. They tremble because of your power. But your merciful promise is beyond all measure. It surpasses all that our minds can fathom. O oh Lord, you are full of compassion, long-suffering, and abounding 
mercy. You hold back your hand. You do not punish as we deserve. In your great goodness, Lord, you have promised forgiveness to sinners that they may repent of their sin and be saved. And now, O oh Lord, I bend to the knee of my heart and make my appeal sure of your gracious goodness. I have sinned. O oh Lord, I have sinned, and I know my wickedness only too well. Therefore, I make this prayer to you. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me. Do not let me perish in my sin, nor condemn me to the depths of the earth. For you, O oh Lord, are the God of those who repent, and in me you will show forth your goodness. Unworthy as I am, you will save me in accordance with your great mercy. And I will cease to never cease to praise you all the days of my life. For all the powers of heaven sing your praises, and yours is the glory of ages and ages. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world and people love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I bring you greetings from Bishop Taylor, Canon McCarthy and the entire diocesan staff. We're here to help you in any way we can. And I'm especially happy to be with you all again. I was with you last year virtually, and well, here I am again, virtually uh, and in person later on this morning. So now, getting a bit serious. I wanna share with you all an experience I had in 2007 that has stuck with me all these years and will stick with me always. Yes, and you're gonna find out very quickly that I'm ignoring the lectionary for today and actually speaking with you about St. Patrick or at least aspects of St. Patrick as, fe as his feast day is just a few days away. Crow Patrick in Ireland has been a site of pilgrimage, especially at the summer solstice since before the arrival of Celtic Christianity, possibly since before the arrival of the Celts. At present, it's named for St. Patrick. Now, what I want you to do is imagine a mountain that the closer you get to the top becomes steeper and steeper and steeper. The last thousand feet or so is virtually straight up. Now imagine that the ground of that same mountain, as you climb higher and higher, becomes more and more densely covered with 
big chunks of rocks. I'm not talking about gravel here. I'm talking about rocks. Some were the size of large potatoes. Others were much larger than that. So in 2007, I thought I was in really pretty good shape when I started climbing Crowpatrick. It was a rainy day in May. I did pretty well for the first hour, but the closer I got to the top, the much more difficult the climb. I walked mainly by myself, although I'd encounter people on the way. I was actually with a pilgrimage group. They were much faster than I was. More often than not, people would speak to me in Irish. The language is called Irish by the locals, by the way, not Gaelic. I'd explain that I didn't speak Irish. But you're Irish, they'd exclaim. Yes, I did look like a good portion of the population. They wished me good luck and a safe journey, and they continued on their way. I continued as well, but not as swiftly as most of them. Most of them had backpacks. I had my big purse slung over my shoulder, the only one climbing Crowpatrick with a big purse. I sort of felt like the Queen of England if I only had a matching hat. As I was climbing up Crowpatrick, there was a woman coming down who slipped in front of me and broke her ankle. I heard her ankle snap. I stopped and sat with her until her husband caught back up with her. He had actually gone farther down the mountain. She was later airlifted off the mountain. After I saw this woman fall, I climbed a little farther to stop and rest. Of course, this man stopped and sat next to me and started speaking to me in Irish. I had to explain, no, not Irish, New Jersey. He looked at me and he said, you look worried. And I was worried. I told him about the woman I had seen break her ankle. He had seen her as well. I told him, I'm afraid to go down now. I'm afraid of this mountain now. I don't know how I'm going to get down. He explained to me that the only way to get down is that you have to plant your foot and slide. Plant your foot and slide again. Don't be afraid to let the mountain take you. Plant your foot slide. Plant your foot slide again. It's the only safe way to get down. You'll make it, he told me. Don't worry. Plant your foot and slide. Wow. I think it was Jesus in the form of that man telling me to plant my foot and slide. I started noticing that the farther I got up the mountain, that was exactly what the seasoned veterans were doing. You could tell these are people that climb this mountain all the time. Most of them would run up it and then come running down, but planting their foot and sliding. These were people that passed me as going up, made it to the top, and now were on their way coming down. I was still trying to make my way up. I made it, though. I made it to the top. I was the last one from the group from the Cathedral College tour I was on to make it. They were sitting, eating and talking, our group. I ate half a sandwich, a sandwich which I had dutifully carried in my purse all the way up that mountain. I couldn't put anything more really on my stomach, so I gave the rest of my lunch away to my fellow pilgrims, and I walked around the top of Pearl Patrick, and I saw it. I saw it with my own eyes. You see, St. Patrick is said to have fasted on the summit of Crowpatrick for 40 days in the 5th century and built a church there. 40 days and 40 nights he spent on the top of Crowpatrick. I saw the church, which of course was not the same one that Patrick built. I also saw the place where tradition has it that Patrick slept for those 40 nights on the top of Crowpatrick. What a view. What a view he had from the top of that mountain. I felt close to God up there, indeed, on the entire trip up the mountain. I prayed all the way up. I prayed all the way down. I prayed at the top. I realized a few things from this experience. The trip or pilgrimage up and down the mountain was and is a metaphor for our spiritual journey. On our spiritual journey, it's not the pace that we keep, 
but the quality of the experience that matters. Many can and do try to race to the top. In a way, it's kind of sad, for they may miss stops with beautiful views in their hurry to get to their destination. I'm not dismissing the experience of those that are focused on the destination. I'm saying that sometimes it's nice to stop and look around. Take in where you are, where you're going, and then continue on the journey. The people that we meet on our journey can be blessings to us or they can throw us off a little. The woman who fell took me off my course to help her. In a way, it was a great experience being a calm presence in the life of someone who was at the moment in pain and very scared. She took me out of concern for myself and my own safety as I had to focus on her. Reflecting back on sitting with the woman, offering her my coat because she was cold, in some ways I kind of felt like the Good Samaritan. Others passed her by as they were trying to get to the top of the mountain. I stayed with her until her husband and friends came back to her. I thank God that she wasn't alone and that she could be cared for. Certainly, the people that stopped and greeted me were kind. It's interesting that people saw me and made assumptions as to what I was, Irish. The journey of faith is like that as well. I pray daily that the people I encounter will see me for what I am, not a bishop, not Irish, but a follower of Jesus of Nazareth. I pray that they will know my faith by the love I have for God and for others, made manifest in the way I treat others around me, not by words, but by actions. I'm eternally grateful to the man who gave me the hint about planting my foot and sliding. I did fall once, but I landed literally, you guessed it, on my purse that everyone laughed that I was carrying. See, you never know. It doubled as a flotation device, so to speak. I was happy I had it. We find guides along our faith journey, guides in the church especially. Yet our guides can come from other places as well. A chance encounter in a store where someone says something that rings so true for ourselves in our journeys. This is the inbreaking of God, of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And our work on this part of our journey is to hear, open our hearts to hear what is being offered to us. Being part of a community of faith, we acknowledge that we are all on a journey. Our journeys are not on smooth roads. Oftentimes our journeys of faith, our journey of faith is rocky. We move forward only to move backward, as I did oftentimes slipping down while going up Crowpatrick. Certainly this past year, navigating the rocky path of this pandemic. We have all learned a new way of being together, a new way of climbing and descending this crazy pandemic mountain. My prayer is that we all learned in this past year, all the ups and downs will strengthen us and bring us closer to each other and to God as we move through and past this pandemic. We are being invited into a new way of being together and being church, and that is exciting. Friends in Christ, you know, Ireland is a beautiful country, full of quaint villages with small shops and pubs as well as big cities. Ireland is full of abbey ruins and holy sites. My husband Steve and I stopped at so many of them. Being there made the language of Celtic Christianity become even more real to me Climbing Crowpatrick made me understand pilgrimage and the faith journey in a new, profound way. In Celtic Christianity, God is infused in everything, and the journey is to see that and make that part of our lives. I invite you, as we move into Holy Week and Easter in the next few weeks, to look at your journey, where you are and where you are going, who is helping you or has helped you being a blessing to you? Who are you helping or have helped? And who are you a blessing to? Give thanks and pray for all these people. And always remember, on your journey of faith, if the going gets tough, don't be afraid 
to plant your foot and slide. Don't be afraid to plant your foot and slide. God will be there with you. May the yoke of the law of God be under your shoulder. May the coming of the Holy Spirit upon your head, the sign of the Christ on your forehead, the hearing of the Holy Spirit in your ears, the smelling of the Holy Spirit in your nose, the vision that the people of heaven have in your eyes, the speech of the people of heaven in your mouth, the work of the church of God in your hands, the good of God and of the neighbor in your feet. May God dwell in your heart and may you belong entirely to God. Amen. Let us join with those who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people, and respect the dignity of every human being. I will, with God's help.
and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Make your ways known upon the earth, O God, your saving power among the people. Renew your church in holiness and help us to serve you with joy. Guide the leaders of this and all nations that justice may prevail throughout the world. Let not the needy, O God, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphaned, and for the sick and the suffering, we ask your prayers for Nicholas, Jill, Barb, Tori, Alexis, Alan, Peggy, Chris, Connie, Don, Lewis, Rick, Mavis, Peggy, Virginia, Paige, victims of violence and the victims of the coronavirus. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of resurrection, and for all the departed, especially Glower, Brian, Shirley, Rosa, Peter, the victims of violence, and the victims of the coronavirus, let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Make us instruments of your peace, and let your glory be over all the earth. The Colic for Today Gracious Father, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, came down from heaven to be the true bread which gives life to the world, evermore give us this bread, that he may live in us and we in him, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A Collect for Sundays. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose Spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, Receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. And now a seasonal blessing for the fourth Sunday in Lent. 
Look down in mercy, Lord, on your people who kneel before you, and grant that those whom you have nourished by your word and sacraments may bring forth fruit worthy of repentance through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, the peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Let us greet one another in the name of the Lord. Good morning. What a glorious morning, and especially to be spending it with our own beloved Bishop Bruce. Thank you for being here, Bishop. It's wonderful to have you. And to hear uh, your sermon on St. Patrick and the journey of faith, which uh, I think we all need some practice in. So thank you. Uh, oh, and as you know, at this very minute, Bishop Bruce is conducting a service of confirmation and affirmation down at the church on the uh, patio there with a few people that have come from the congregation to be confirmed and just a very few of their visitors with them. But it does kind of bode well for the fact that maybe soon we'll be getting back into our church. And I hope that will be soon, but I don't really think we're going to make it by Easter. So uh, don't uh, keep your hopes up for that too much. But we'll get there. Now, on the uh, let's see, on the good news front, uh, two of our uh, musical scholars that have been with us all year, Emma Ujifusi, uh has just uh, been accepted by three colleges to take her master's in, uh, in music, which is very lovely. And I think she's going to possibly have another one, so she'll have four choices, which is great. And uh, you know Daniel Adair, she's been with us for quite a while now, singing in the choir and doing a lot of other work. And uh, she's working for a uh, some kind of record company, I think. Anyway, she's got a couple of promotions in that and is now leading a team that uh, is working on music with YouTube. I may not have that completely right, but anyway, congratulations, <laughs> congratulations uh, to those two uh, lovely friends. And you know, we've had an awful lot of, of uh, good music this year from these particular choral scholars. Uh, they've added to a very unhappy or, or certainly a very difficult year for the church and for some of us. So. They've, they've brought some real joy into our lives and uh, we thank them for that and uh, we want to let them know we love them. Uh, oh, and on, on the music front, uh, our own Grace Baldridge is featured in uh, last week's copy of the Episcopal News. Wonderful story, tells you uh, quite a bit about Grace and uh, what she's been able to do, the things she's overcome. She's a pretty... Pretty smart cookie. So uh, try and look at that. It's, it's really good. Um, let's see. Oh, the Lenten series on Wednesdays is going very well. We've got about, uh, oh, I don't know, 10 or 12 people come every week. And it's really worked out well. There's been a, uh, a real feeling of uh, intimacy between us. And uh, I look forward to it every week. You should come and join us. It's... Uh, there's no set procedure, so you can just come in and uh, uh, have a word or two with your old friends. It's good. Now, uh, oh, in a couple of weeks, on March the 22nd, Monday the 22nd, is that two weeks? No, that's one week. I don't know where I am. Anyway, on March the 27, 22nd at 4 o'clock, we'll be doing the SOS dinner. We're hosts again. So if anybody can help us with that, uh, Barbara and I would appreciate it and uh, look forward to hearing from you. And uh, that's about all now. So uh, as usual, be safe, be well, wear a mask and follow our Lord Jesus. Cheerio. Now let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.